Hi, I'm Pauline Voss, a Professor Emeritus at the University of Minnesota. Uh, I'm going to talk about ambiguous loss, a term I coined in the 1970s when I was working with families and uh, noticed that in, at that time the fathers didn't want to be there. They were physically present but psychologically absent. Um, in my theory building course, uh, the professor said, it's more than about fathers, Pauline. So I came up with the term ambiguous loss. It's a more inclusive term. It can include any member of the family who is there but not there, who might be physically missing through being kidnapped, uh, through being away at college, which is more common, uh, or through being uh, in the military, or it could be someone who is psychologically missing, uh, such as with autism or dementia. Uh, I'll just read from the uh, book, Ambiguous Loss, that summarizes all this. There are two basic kinds of ambiguous loss. In the first type, people are perceived by family members as physically absent but psychologically present because it's unclear if they're dead or alive. Missing soldiers and kidnapped children illustrate this type of loss in catastrophic form. More everyday occurrences would be divorce and adoption, for example. In the second type of ambiguous loss, a person is perceived as physically present but psychologically absent. This condition is illustrated in the extreme by peoples with Alzheimer's disease, addictions, and other chronic mental illnesses. It can also occur when a person experiences serious head trauma. Uh, both types of ambiguous loss their effects and how people live with them are discussed uh, in many of my writings. But let me say that uh, ambiguous loss leads to frozen grief, a complicated grief that is very difficult to deal with. However, there are people who have learned to do this uh, by both and thinking, by thinking the person might be coming back, but maybe not, and by dealing with the stress of that, um, con uh, that uh, paradox, uh, that they're there, but they're not there. Uh, I've written a lot. See the website ambiguousloss.com for that. And I hope you find the term as interesting as I have to study. Researchers from around the world are studying uh, and researching and testing the theory of ambiguous loss now. Um, and uh, I am delighted that a second generation of scholars and researchers and clinicians uh, are picking up on the theory of ambiguous loss, testing it, and improving it even further. Thanks for watching.